Watch now as I take you down a road that is less traveled in the field of medicine. You've seen all the doctors taking many tests and pills, but you keep getting worse. Do you know why? Welcome to Know the Cause. I'm Dr. Fred Pescatore from New York City. Probiotics are essential to every part of your health, not just your gut. Sit back, listen, and welcome to Know the Cause. Well, welcome aboard, friends. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Fred Pescatore, all the way from New York City. Late 1980s, early 1990s, I worked at one of the big hospitals out here under the tutelage of a couple of skin doctors, dermatologists, they're called. By the time my first year was done, I got those doctors to begin questioning the skin patient's intestinal problems. Do you also have bloating, belching, gas, constipation, diarrhea, GERD, etc.? And you know, 70 to 80% of these skin patients said, yeah, I do. Why? What's the correlation? That's what we're going to learn today. Today is me, and it's all about intestinal problems. Call them Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, you name it. Early in the show, we have a young man who had a horrible problem called Crohn's. Dr. Lynn Jennings joins us, great testimonials. And then I'm going to teach you what irritable bowel disease is really all about. You know, I do a lot of shows on tummy disorders, right? Crohn's, uh, colitis, et cetera. And there's so many stomach disorders. The one that everybody talks about is Crohn's disease. Remember first, this was named after a guy, after a doctor. So any disease named after a doctor has got to be something he didn't learn in medical school. What's the cause of Crohn's? We don't know, but we can sure diagnose it. Is it a treatable condition with diet? Folks, most doctors will say absolutely not. But we have a young man with us today that I want to uh, introduce you to. His name is Matt Spears. He lives out near the Tulsa, Oklahoma area. He works in the field of medicine. And one day he decided, boy, I've got this condition bad, this Crohn's disease. I want to take on this diet and challenge Doug Kaufman. Matt, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Doug. It's really a pleasure to have you on. I, I told you that you have the second best looking family in the whole world. Uh, mine, <laughs> of course, being the first. Uh, just a beautiful, beautiful family. Congratulations on that. Take me back to when you were a child, like one of those children you now have. Did you have stomach problems way back then? As far back as I can remember, Doug, I used to have periods where I would just kind of lay on the floor, double over, wow. and just have these kind of waves of abdominal cramps and stabbing pains. And at the time, I didn't think a whole lot of it. I thought, well, maybe I'm hungry. I should eat something. So I tried to eat more frequently. You know, tried, you know, Tums like Digel things and Pepto-Bismol. And none of that really seemed to help much. Um, when did you finally I, go to a doctor about it? I didn't go to a doctor for my stomach problems until I was uh, 27. Wow. But you, so that's what, five, six years ago. But you had had, you've noticed, so one of the worries is you got bleeding and mucus and all, you're going to the bathroom a half a dozen, dozen times a day. And you knew something was wrong. I did. I didn't really notice much of the blood when I was younger. Um, I noticed that more two years ago when I went again to the doctor for the second time. And folks, for those of you who are brand new to the show, we believe that antibiotics can actually induce some inflammatory processes in the intestine. I want to show you at 27, 28 years old, I want to kind of show you here graphically what was going on inside of Matt's intestines. Uh, uh, this is the before shot of the ileum, and you see the sores. As I'm looking at these things, Matt, I'm thinking you must have just the inflammation, the swelling, you must have been miserable with this. You know, I, I honestly thought it would have hurt more. I guess I was just so used to it with all my life. And uh, as a child, like you were saying, I was on a lot of antibiotics at least once or twice a year for chronic sinus infections. Mm -hmm. And these images you're looking at were, actually, were taken two years ago when I was 31. Wow. And, um, Wow. So at 31, Matt, you, probably your wife, if you're anything like most guys, your wife said, you're going to go to the doctor and get this thing figured out. So you go to the doctor, you go through this testing. What did the doctor tell you at that visit afterwards? 
the doctor said, well, you have inflammation all the way from your stomach down to your rectum, so we don't know what's causing it. We've done some biopsies. They're not coming back with typical bacteria that they looked for. And so he said, well, you're the proud owner of a Crohn's diagnosis because you have inflammation that is more than just in your colon. Wow. And you weren't doubled over in pain. I wasn't, but uh, also I've, I've, I've run a marathon. I, I never really tried to let things stop yeah. me. I guess I was used to it, and after a while you, you just kind of tune your, your mind. You look like you're in that. great shape, and I know you tune it out. Hey, Matt, did you ever find that foods, I mean, in your 20s, you may have, like I did, you may have stumbled onto a beer or a sandwich or potato chips, something like that. Did you find that any of those things tend to flare the intestines up? Well, I felt so misguided because when I would have stomach pain, I would go to, you know, pretzels or something like that, thinking, okay, that'll be easy to digest. Wow. And I would get maybe five, ten minutes, fifteen minutes of relief, and then it would kind of hurt again. And then after a while, I'd just ignore it and move yeah. on. Yeah, and move on. So you didn't find a cause and effect relationship between a food and the symptoms. The closest I found was dairy products. Okay. Yeah, which is lactose, which is milk sugar now. We didn't bring Matt on the show to give you all this bad news. That just isn't who Matt Spears is. We have, after we get back from this short break, we have some good news. Matt is just one. We've worked with so many people like this that we thought it was time to ask a real person in medicine with this disease to see if he could teach you something about what inspired him the past few years to really try and get out and fix this thing and how he did it. Don't go away, more of Matt Spears right around the corner. It's fungus until proven otherwise. I'm here at Roy's Natural Market here in Dallas, Texas, my favorite health food store in Dallas for another Fubo segment and today, carrot juice. You guys know, if you've watched Know the Cause for any length of time, that carrot juice is Doug's favorite juice. And for good reason. It's loaded with, obviously, beta carotene, the stuff that makes it orange, wonderful antioxidants, and it's a thrill to drink something sweet that's guilt-free. But what about we Fupo heads? What does it do for us? What is it that actually gives the carrot juice its punch? While I was reading a study at the University of Newcastle, they showed that all of the ingredients in carrot juice, all of the things that we love to drink carrot juice for, nothing was more important than something called falcarinol. And what does falcarinol do? It protects the carrots against fungus. This is why we don't care about the glycemic index of carrot juice. People are asking me all the time, what about the glycemic index? It doesn't matter. As long as it takes care of fungus, as long as it takes care of mycotoxins, that's why we love it and we always will. And the reason is simple. It's fungus until proven otherwise. I'm like you, I'm waiting with bated breath to see what he did for this condition. He'll be back, don't worry. The role of fungus in digestive disorders is explored. Cedar sinai June of 2012, these doctors said, you know, we know there's a hundred trillion germs in the gut, more than blood cells in the body. But what we didn't know is so many of them are fungus. They found in sick patients with gut diseases, they found over a hundred species, some of them pathogenic, they can cause disease in man, in the bowels of these people. Folks, people with gut diseases always get antibiotics. And what you may ask is wrong with giving gut disease patients antibiotics? I'm so glad you asked, because here is your answer. So what we're looking at here is colitis, which is an inflammation of the colon. And what you can see here is there are some areas in the, in the colon that look very inflamed, this red, these red areas. And actually, there actually looks like there's some ulceration. It, it's kind of hard for, for you to see if you've never looked at a colon before, but these little patches that look kind of white. Now, you've got these big areas of white here, 
and that actually is something entirely different. The treatment for colitis is antibiotics. And when you, have antibi when you use antibiotics, it's a risk factor for developing fungal disease. These white patches look like fungus. They look like candida. Knowing that candida and fungus are from the same, are the, when we're talking about fungus, we're talking about candida. So the treatment for this, in my mind, would be antifungals using diflucan or nystatin. Um, nystatin would be nice because it would just stay in the gastrointestinal tract and it wouldn't be absorbed, so there would not be any toxicity issues. Um, but also you may need to use a more systemic antifungal because there, when it gets to this point, there's probably more fungus elsewhere besides just the GI tract. I was in the Marine Corps in Vietnam uh, from the start of the Tet Offensive in 1968 through February of 1969. In the Southeast Asia, I mean, it was a fungus and mold empire. Everything we did was covered with it. Uh, our clothes were covered with it. We were covered with it. You couldn't wash it off. When I came back, I was covered with a type of skin fungus. I went to the uh, Navy Medical Corps and asked for help, and they weren't able to do anything. The VA said, we don't know what you got. And I, and I went to many doctors who told me that. I, 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 I don't know how to cure this, is what I heard repeatedly. My son started uh, talking about Doug and his program and fungal infections. I cut back on drinking, which hurt. I cut back on sugar, and I take uh, olive leaf extract at least uh, one day, five pills in the morning, five in the afternoon. Uh, I take cinnamon. Uh, I'm going to start taking apple cider vinegar, and uh, one of these days I'm going to find somebody who prescribes some diflucan or nystatin. But the important thing is to get the sugar out of your diet, get it out of your life. And listen to Doug, uh, what he's telling you is, is true. It wasn't until I got on phase one and really started concentrating on getting rid of sugar that I realized after a while it was gone. I haven't had it for almost 10 years now. And, yeah, it was phenomenal. What a show we have going today because of one dear new best friend. His name is Matt Spears. If you missed the first five or six minutes, Matt was diagnosed a few years ago with Crohn's disease. And folks, there isn't a good prognosis, I'm sorry, for Crohn's disease patients. And all the king's horses and all the king's men told him, did uh, scans on him and said, look, you have Crohn's disease, you're going to live a life relegated to medications. Is that accurate, Matt? Yes, that's accurate. And, and what... What happened? Because I now know things are totally different. I want to show folks, you had something in addition to Crohn's, you had a little polyp here. I have seen these deep within the noses when I used to work in ear, nose, and throat. I've never seen a, an intestinal polyp, but that's what it looks like. So Matt, tell us what, what happened, what transpired to have you get better. Well, 13 months after I was diagnosed with Crohn's, I continued with the plan of medication and had very little guidance on my diet. I asked for guidance, and the response was, well, eat what you want. Nothing really seems to matter. Yeah. Yep. So I was blessed to have the opportunity to have someone tell me about a book called The Fungus Link, which I think you're familiar with. <laughs> I know the guy who wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he was a patient of mine, actually, that brought it up, and with some prompting by God, yep. I really felt led to give this a try. And I'd had some success with an ENT doctor who had given me a sinus rinse that was supposed to have antifungal properties, and I'd had more success in my sinuses than anything else. <laughs> so I got on a diet last August, and I've been on it for a year, and my symptoms dramatically decreased. The gas and the bloating I've lived with every day of my life almost went away at the beginning. Um, two months into it, I set a new personal record at a uh, 15K Wow. run and felt great. I continued to feel good and better through the entire year. My weight has stabilized. I'm not losing weight or gaining it suddenly. And I feel great. I feel better than I ever have. What did and the doctor say? I just say, had man? a new scope. Uh, yes, you had the new scope. I want to show folks, okay, this is a normal ileum. This is what it's supposed to look like. 
uh, probably a little bile, you know, a little green thing. Um, this looks better. What did the doctor say? The doctor was amazed. He said, you can't argue with perfection. The Crohn's is completely in remission, and there is no sign of Crohn's. Yeah, wow, congratulations. Phase one diet, did you take supplements or antifungal medicines? I added those a little bit later. I was running off your website because yeah. I had trouble with Amazon getting your book. <laughs> and so I have added those later. Um, but the phase one I did for the first month, um, did four weeks of that. And then now I've gradually added some things back in, but I've stayed true to uh, you know phase two, phase three diet. And I love to eat, and I can cook about <laughs> anything I want by changing a few ingredients. Matt, that is a tremendous testimonial. Thank you so much for joining us today. Take care of that wonderful family. Thank you, and keep sharing the good news. I sure will. Uh, Louis was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, and he was severely bleeding and having uh, no absorption of his nutrition through his intestines. We went to traditional doctors and uh, nothing was helping us. And we did uh, get a hold of Doug and he gave us alternative eating plans and that's what we tried. It wasn't a quick fix. I mean, we really had to work hard. Well, we didn't know it, but Louis was uh, eating a lot of breads, a lot of pastas, a lot of rice. And we did not realize that he might have an intolerance for it. We tested him for celiac and he was not celiac. He had no celiac disease. So traditional doctors did not know what to do with him other than give him lots of uh, drugs and steroids. First thing we did was get off of all the breads and all the pastas and, and rice. We started doing a lot of vegetables, juicing. Prior to this, he was very active. While he was recovering, his body was really shutting down. He was taking uh, Nystatin and uh, Diflucan. He's doing really well. He's gained all his weight back. He was hit up, uh, you know, for three months, and he'd start getting better, and then you revert, you go back to eating bad again, and you think, oh, I'm going to try this, and he would go back to feeling worse, so now he stays on his diet. Uh, knowledge is power. You really need to educate yourselves. Um, doctors are wonderful. They're out there to, you know, I think they have some good intentions. I think they don't know everything, and I think that we need to educate ourselves and learn how our bodies work, what works best for us, and seek some wisdom from people that are not necessarily trained in the medical field. They don't know everything. Doug was very wise. He was very sensitive. He uh, presented uh, ideas to us that we had never been presented before. And it really made us question like, you know, what, what is it that we're really doing? Are we sick because of what we're doing? Do we get better, you know, by changing what we've done in the past? Or do we just pop a pill and say, this is gonna help me? And we found out that it did not. And so Louis today does not have any symptoms of his ulcerative colitis. He's healthy and he's gained his weight back and he's enjoying life. We praise God for that. You know, I think one of the saddest parts of this disease, these bowel diseases, is they affect young boys and girls. Uh, we have a couple of guys in the studio that have this. And why is that? I mean, nobody really knows. And the problem is doctors don't know. Look at this headline. This is from womenshealth.gov. Inflammatory bowel disease is the name of a group of disorders in which the intestines become inflamed, right? There might be a hundred different disorders. No one knows for sure what causes irritable bowel. Since doctors don't know what causes irritable bowel, there's no proven way to prevent it. No special eating plan has been proven effective for treating irritable bowel disorder. And yet you just heard from Pat, and you heard from Matt, and you heard from Dr. Jennings that there is a diet that really helps these people. Folks, we've got to start thinking outside of the box. That Crohn's it was a doctor. Dr. Crohn's. Anything named after a doctor has got to be something he didn't learn in medical school. He learned this much about bacteria, this much about viruses, and that much 
about mycology, the study of fungus. So let's learn a little. The first thing I would do, I really like what all of these people did. They get to a doctor and get the condition diagnosed. I've always said, if you wake up in the morning and there's blood on your sheets and there shouldn't be, get to a doctor and have him rule out something more severe is going on. Once it's diagnosed, ask the doctor if he or she will help you rule out a GI tract yeast or fungal condition. Is this really a rare condition? Doctors will tell you, look, I'm going to give you the antibiotics, give you the prednisone, just like they're candy at Halloween time, but I'm not going to give you antifungals because those could hurt you. Ask for Nystatin. Nystatin doesn't have side effects. New York State in. It was developed in Albany, New York in 1950 by doctors Hazen and Brown. Very, very safe. It's a soil-based antibiotic. And so ask your doctor for that. Here's a link that you're going to need. Uh, and I'll put it on our website. Don't worry, this whole show will be on the website so you can copy this link. It's important. Here's what this link says. An emerging fungal infection of the uh, gastrointestinal tract that mimics cancer and inflammatory bowel disease, IBD, appears to be emerging in southwestern U.S. and other desert regions, according to Mayo Clinic researchers. Now, this will be up. Copy that link. Take it to your doctor. This is science. What I just read you about the doctors at Cedar sinai saying, wait a minute, we've totally overlooked fungus in the gut. All you've got to do, folks, is take these reports into your doctor and say, Doc, with all due respect, I've been on prednisone for 20 years. I don't know what my liver looks like. I've been on your antibiotics for a long, long period of time, and I've gained a lot of weight. What I really would like is for us to step outside of the box and look at this disorder as though fungi were causing it. I'm willing to change my diet, but help me with antifungals. Don't go away. You know, it's harmful to your health to take antibiotics without also taking probiotics. Yet many of you have never been warned of this danger. You see, once the antibiotic enters your system, it goes off like a shotgun, killing both the germs and the good bacteria. That's about the time when bad yeast and parasites and other germs grow like crazy and they cause a secondary infection. Come on, everybody, let's get this party started. Unfortunately, it's a party for them and sheer misery for you. Some of you get uncomfortable yeast infections, others get a tongue coating, and any one of a hundred symptoms associated with whatever germ is having the party. You can't see what's going on, so you just have to trust me on this. Probiotics help by running damage control and pushing out the pathogens. Folks, for those of you just joining, I think this is a keeper, right? On our homepage, knowthecause.com, we have the cancer show, we have the diabetes show, and this is the gut show. A lot of us have gut disorders, folks. The bowel's supposed to move every day several times. Most of us are constipated in America, and we just don't get that those toxins go somewhere if they're not leaving us, okay? So gut disorders are just kind of standard today in medicine. What we're trying to do is teach those of you with stomach disorders how much the other problems tend to disappear. I'll never forget a guy I had with ringing in his ear at the hospital. After we fix this, this just magically cleared up. He had been seeing an ear, nose, and throat doctor for that condition for a long period of time. So let the education begin. I wrote down six things I would do if I had stomach problems, and I hope you'll see uh, to do these also. Number one is to starve the fungus. This is a living microorganism. Many fungi, like bacteria, are pathogenic. That means they cause disease in men. But fungus are parasites. That means they need to eat our foods. We know what fungus eats. It loves pasta, it loves beer, it loves bread, right? It loves rice, it loves oatmeal. It eats grains and carbohydrates. It loves potatoes. More sugars, the more it likes it. So starve it. Don't eat those foods. The phase one diet is right here on our website, getting started. Go to our website, pull it down. You don't have to buy a book. It's right there, the phase one diet. Then kill the fungus, either with prescription drugs like Diflucan or Nystatin. That's the one we've talked about earlier, harmless. This one filters through the liver, but it's safer than the older generation, uh, Nizerol and other drugs, because it filters into the bloodstream and then through the liver. The others tended to dump right into the liver. Or supplements. You've heard me talk about it. Caprylic acid, olive leaf extract, microblast. There's all sorts of good, safe supplements. 
I would always sit down with the doctor first. You got to do that. Folks, if you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. If you teach a doctor how to get better, then he can help so many of his other gut disorder patients. You keep in touch with them. Doctor, you're not going to believe this, but the bowel's finally working. You know what? I've lost 30 pounds on this program. Thank you for the antifungals. Pretty soon, he's going to come in the next day and see another patient just like you and say, wow, maybe I should put these people on Diflucan and Nystatin and Kaufman's Phase 1 diet. Okay, investigate, continue. Here's number three. You're already on the diet. You've taken the antifungals. Within a few weeks, you're going to feel optimistic that you're finally on the right track. Diet cheating may happen. By the way, I call this challenging. Uh, it may happen and will likely make you sick again. By going back on the phase one diet strictly, within a day or two, you'll probably feel much better. And if you're anything like me, you'll wipe your forehead and say, whew, I dodged that bullet. I don't have to go back into those horrible gut diseases. Fungi are smart little buggers and they're resistant to treatments. Rotate these antifungals every few months. Okay? And then finally, detoxify by using psyllium. Psyllium binds mycotoxins in the gut. Antibiotic residues, etc., binds onto them and then you eliminate them. Exercise regularly. Boy, that's hard. I got up this morning and did 35 minutes. It's hard to get up early in the morning. And use far infrared saunas to help detoxify your body. And finally, this healing takes time. Stay in touch with your doctor. I really like this idea, folks. It, teach your doctor. He's really busy, he's got to see 50, 60 patients a day. But be an image that walks into his office and says, I'm doing better. Thank you for the nice statin. Look at now I've lost this weight. My bowel problem isn't as bad as it used to be. Keep in constant touch with him and let him see that he can help so many of his other patients by the approach you took. Don't go away. I'll wrap today's show in just a moment. Hi, I'm Jenny Herbacek with The Cancer Connection. Did you know that one of the best fats you can eat is coconut oil? It has lauric acid in it, which boosts your immune system, and a strong immune system is the best defense against cancer. Lauric acid is antiviral, antifungal, and antibacterial. Coconut oil also stabilizes blood sugar levels, and that's really important because sugar is cancer's favorite food. So consider taking a couple of spoonfuls of good quality coconut oil every day. For Know the Cause, I'm Jenny Herbacek. Well, in case you haven't noticed, rapidly healthcare is changing throughout America. It's incumbent upon us to take good care of our health. Folks, it's hard getting up at six in the morning and working out, but it's something at my age I must do. The road forks. I can either start running to doctor after doctor after doctor, getting script after script after script, or getting up in the morning working out and changing my diet and supplementing. So, here's the Know the Cause quiz today. According to a 1992 article in the Scandinavian Journal of Gastroenterology, Dr. Barclay noted that the symptoms of Crohn's disease, remember our first guest today, Matt, were lower when his patients did what? Ate a low carbohydrate diet, avoided brewer's yeast, avoided baker's yeast, what would you think? What would you think the answer to that one is? There it is. All of the above. So in other words, yeast must have had something to do with all those gut complaints. What else could it be when you have stomach problems? That's where your food goes, that's where your supplements should go, and the proper food. It'll all work if you treat it good. See you next time. God bless. Bye-bye.